Good morning, students. Today we will continue talking about periodontium part two. As we said earlier, the periodontium includes cementum, periodontal ligament, alveolar bone, and the gingiva. The fibers of the periodontal ligaments are mainly of collagen, and they are divided into principal fibers, accessory fibers, and oxytelan fibers or elastic fibers. Interstitial tissue found inside the periodontal ligament. Uh, it is uh, uh, some of the blood vessels, lymphatics, and nerves of periodontal ligament are surrounded by loose connective tissue. The these areas have termed interstitial tissue. These areas are the interstitial tissues inside the periodontal ligament. Also, we have fibroblasts, histiocytes, and different types of other cells. The periodontal ligament is a dense fibrous connective tissue which occupies the space between the roots of the teeth and the alveolar bone and is communicated with the gingiva and the pulp of the teeth. This section is a decalcified section between the root of the tooth and the alveolar bone. In between, we have the periodontal ligament. The root, we have the dentin. The last layer is the Tom's granular layer. Then I have the cementum. Which type of cementum here? It is a cellular type. At the surface of the cementum, what types of cells that we will find? We will find cementoplasts. Look at the arrangement of the cementoplast on the surface. As you can see here, they are spaced spaces between these cells. Then I have the fibers of the periodontal ligaments, which runs in bundles. They run in bundles. Then I have the alveolar bone. These fibers, periodontal ligament fibers, will enter the cementum. As they enter the cementum, we will call them Sharpe's fibers. Also, they will enter the alveolar bone. And when they enter the alveolar bone, we will call them Sharpe's fibers in between periodontal ligament. On the surface of the bone, the types of the cells that we will see, we will see osteoblasts. Osteoblasts, the cells which forms the bone. These cells, when they are entrapped inside the hard structure of the bone, we will call them osteocytes. And they will be found inside lacunae. We call it osteocyte lacuni, and this lacuni have canaliculi, and these canaliculi are radiating in all directions. If we compare it to the lacuni of the cemento site, the lacuni of the cemento sites is direct is unidirection, directing only in one way. So I have osteoblast on the surface. The first uh, laid down bone we call it osteoid before mineralization then it will be mineralized to give us the bone and the cells inside this uh, bone we call them osteocyte and lacuni is osteolized osteocyte lacuni also the bone ha on the surface have large multinucleated cells found in lacuni we call it howship's lacuni we call them osteoclast this is an osteoclast and this is another osteoclast, large multinucleated cell that undergoes resorption for the bone. So I have bone forming cells, osteoblast, and cells responsible for the resorption of the bone, we call them osteoclast. This is a cross section between tooth number one and tooth number two. In between, I have the alveolar bone, between the alveolar bone and the tooth, I have the periodontal ligament. This periodontal ligament have collagen fibers, runs in bundles, and inserted inside the cementum as Sharpe's fibers, and inside the bone as Sharpe's fibers. Inside the bone, I have two systems of canals. One, we call it 
Haversian canals, these are the Haversian canals which runs with the long axis of the tooth and other types of canals which connects the Haversian canals together that runs at right angle to the long axis of the tooth we call them Volkmann canals. Depending on the section how we will see these canals depends on the angle of cutting to the section. If the cutting is cross at right angle to the tooth the Haversian canals will look circular and the Volkmann canals will look rectangular. If the section uh, is cut uh, longitudinally with the long axis of the tooth, the Volkmann canals will look circular and the Haversian canal will look rectangular. So, because this section is taken at right angle to the or cross section to the tooth and the bone, this canal, which we see rounded, is a Haversian canal. This is a Haversian canal. What types of cells that we will see, depending uh, near the cementum, cementoblasts near the bone, osteoblasts and osteoclasts, in between I have fibroblasts, collagen fibers, and other types of cells. Uh, in this picture, I see here I have the bulb, the dentin, Always the last layer of the dentine is the tom's granular layer. Then I have the cementum. This type of cementum is a cellular. Then I have the periodontal ligament. I can see the interstitial spaces in between. And then I have the alveolar bone. The canals that will look circular are Haversian canals. And the canals which look like the, this one below, as it is rectangular, it is a Volkmann canal. You can see here the interstitial tissue and you can see the periodontal ligaments and we will see inside the Sharpe's fibers. Also in the bone, as you can notice here, I have lines. These lines are incremental lines of the bone. We call them reversal lines. Like the lines in the cementum, incremental lines of solitaire in the bone, we call them incremental lines or reversal line. In bone, we call them reversal lines. If we look at this section, we can see the acellular cementum on both sides, the periodontal ligament on both sides, and the alveolar bone in between. These canals, the Haversia and the Volkmann canals, what runs inside them? Runs inside them blood vessels like this one. It is an artery because it has a thick wall. This is an artery, and the, th the vessels which have thin wall or not well demarcated are veins. Also, I have nerves, nerve bundles, and also at the same time, look at this papal appearance. This is a adipose tissue or fat tissue. Any structure that have a papal soap, papal appearance is a fat tissue. The one below, look, this is an artery. And this is another artery. I can see the venules. Also, I have lymphatics and uh, deposit tissue or fat tissue. This is a longitudinal section, decalcified. You can see the tunnel tubules and they are branching and looping. The area of the Tom's granular layer. Above Tom's granular layer, I have the hyaline layer. Then I have the cementum. It is dark. No cells inside. It is an acellular cementum. Then I have the periodontal ligament, then I have the alveolar bone. I can see the incremental lines, the reversal lines of the bone. I can see canals because this section is a longitudinal section. So this one, this canal is a Volkmann canal. And the ones which are look rectangular are Haversian canals. Inside I have blood vessels, lymphatics and nerves. This is a decalcified section, as usual, dentin, last layer is Tom's granular layer, hyaline layer, cementum, and it is uh, incremental lines of sorter, it is an acellular cementum. I have the periodontal ligament fibers, and then I have the bone. Look at the surface of the bone at this area. It is not straight as the image before. Why it is not straight? Because there are multiple Volkmann canals that runs or communicate between 
the periodontal ligament and the alveolar bone. So this bone, which is opposing the tooth, is perforated by multiple Volkmann canals that communicates the periodontal ligament with the alveolar bone. It is perforated. It is like a cripriform. So this bone, alveolar jaw, which lines the socket of the tooth, we call it cripriform plate. Why we call it cripriform plate? Because it is perforated by multiple Volkmann canals, which communicates the <coughs> periodontal ligament with the alveolar bone. When we talk the alveolar socket, what do you mean of it? The alveolar socket is the part of the bone in which the tooth is found. The alveolar bone or the alveolar process is that part of the maxilla or mandible which holds the tooth, the sockets of the teeth. The part of maxilla or mandible which holds the sockets of the teeth. This socket, which uh, the tooth is inserted inside it, uh, have multiple names. One of the names is cripriform plate. We call it cripriform plate. Why? Because it is perforated by multiple Volkmann canals. Here also you can see the bundles of the collagen fibers inserted inside the alveolar bone. Here a higher magnification to see the sieve-like appearance of the bone lining the socket. Here I have the Volkmann canals entering the bone. In this image, we can see the bundles of the periodontal ligament fibers, which enters the bone as bundles, and also enters the cementum. Sharpest fibers, sharpest fibers in between periodontal ligament. In this image, we can see the dentine, Tom's granular layer, the acellular cementum, at the surface, I can identify the types of cells, clumps of clusters of cells that we see near the cementum. We call them epithelial rest of malice, remnant of herpetic root sheath. Then I have the periodontal ligament fibers. At the left side, you can see these are the bundles of the periodontal ligament entering the bone, sharpest fibers. Because the Periodontal ligaments enters the bone as bundles. Another name for the bone of the socket, we call it bundle bone. Why it is called bundle bone? Because bundles of collagen fibers are entering the bone. Or the, bo the collagen fibers enter the bone as bundles. That's why we call that bone lining the socket as bundle bone. This image, you can identify. The first arrow here is the acellular cementum. And you can see the incremental lines. This is the Tom's granular layer, the end layer of the dentine. At the periphery of the cementum, you can identify the cementoplasts. In between, we can identify the periodontal ligament fibers, the collagen fibers. Uh, this arrow referring to the collagen fibers. Here inside the bone, the collagen fibers, the sharpest fibers as bundles. That's why we call it bundle bone. And because it is perforated by Velkman canals, we call it cripriform plate. Now we'll talk about the periodontal ligament fibers or the types of the periodontal ligament fibers. But before we talk about it, we have to identify some of the landmarks. This bone in between the teeth, we call it interdental bone. This bone between tooth number one and tooth number two. This bone is the interdental bone. For multi-rooted teeth, this is the interradicular bone between the roots of the teeth. The periodontal ligament fibers are dentoalveolar fibers, which means that the origin is tooth and the insertion is in bone. To call it a periodontal ligament fiber, it has to start in bone and ends in the tooth. And uh, these periodontal ligament fibers have different names according to the position. Uh, look at the interdental bone. This top area of the dental of the interdental bone, the highest point that it will reach, we call it the crest. So this is the crest of the interdental bone. So the fibers which will go from this crest to the tooth, we call it alveolar crest group. 
the fibers below it are horizontal in direction so we call it uh, the horizontal group below the horizontal group i have other fibers which runs obliquely downward so i will call them oblique group the end of the tooth this is the apex the apical area so the grooves that will run in it, this area we call it the apical group and in the area of the interradicular uh, bone the grooves that will run in this area we call them interradicular group of periodontal ligament you can see here some fibers that runs from the cementum of one tooth to the cementum of another tooth that doesn't pass through the bone or doesn't contact the bone those fibers we call them transeptal these are the transeptal they are not from the periodontal ligament fibers we these are the transeptal fibers from cementum to cementum in this section you can identify the different parts this is the alveolar crest as we said this is the alveolar crest as we said earlier so the the group of fiber that will run from this uh, area to the tooth obliquely upward alveolar crest group then i have the horizontal group and then i have the oblique group below and near the apex i have the apical group here i have the gingiva in this image you can see the stages of eruption for the tooth look at the site of the periodontal ligament at first at the end when the tooth is uh, uh, erupted and it reaches the occlusion two-thirds of the tooth is formed only two-thirds of the tooth is rot. as the tooth is developed also the periodontal ligament fibers will be developed at the same time uh, the process of eruption depends of detachment and reattachment of the periodontal ligament fibers in other words the fibers are inserted inside the cementum as sharpest fibers when the tooth moves upwards there will be shearing or uh, tearing of these fibers in the middle and then the tooth will move upward and there will be a reattachment to these fibers once again in the tooth so the process of eruption is process of detachment and reattachment it will it will detach from one point as the tooth moves upward then it will reattach in another point in this image we can identify some of the periodontal ligament fibers that runs through the whole thickness of the bone these fibers we call them transalveolar fibers they start at the cementum of one tooth then they cross the periodontal ligament space and then cross the whole thickness of the tooth and are inserted on the tooth uh, next to it these fibers we call them trans alveolar trans alveolar fibers in this image a longitudinal section this is the crest of the alveolar bone the interdental bone i have the alveolar crest group below i have the horizontal group and look at these fibers these fibers runs from cementum to cementum these fibers are the transeptal fibers the transalveolar from cementum to crossing the bone to the cementum on the adjacent bone these are the transalveolar so i have transeptal transalveolar and the other periodontal ligament fibers this is a scanning electron microscope for the bone here i can see at the image uh, on the right the size of the insertion of the Sharpe's fibers and the larger ones are the size of the osteoplast on the surface here i have on the uh, image on the left here the sites of the insertion you can see that these holes are not clearly obvious in these two images i have two cases i have a resting bone and i have an active bone the active bone when we can identify the position or the holes clearly this is an active bone undergoing a deposition and resorption and on the left i have a resting bone when the two bone is resting which means there is no activity no deposition or composition the insertion of the periodontal ligament fibers inside the bone will be mineralized calcium hydroxyapatite crystal with deposit this is a resting bone
Other types of fibers that we can identify in the periodontal ligament are the oxytalian fibers or elastic fibers. These elastic fibers start from cementum or bone and they end on a blood vessel or nails. And in order to see them, we need special stain. And their function, or they serve as shock absorbance to protect the fragile blood vessels and nerves in the periodontal ligaments. Here I can identify the elastic fibers. They long, uh, they run at right angle to the periodontal ligament fibers. These are the elastic fibers. These are the elastic fibers. The periodontal ligament fibers enter the tooth or the bone at right angle or oblique. At the image on the right, you can identify the collagen fibers and the oxytaline fibers. The oxytaline fibers look smooth, while the collagen fibers are rough in shape. Here I can identify a cell of uh, a fibroblast cell. So the collagen fibers are rough, the elastic fibers are smooth. Origin, bone or cementum, insertion, blood vessel or nerve, function, shock absorbance. This is an image between dentine, Tom's granular layer, a cellular cementum, Periodontal ligament. These are the bundles of the periodontal ligaments. The cells that we can identify, cementoblast on the surface. Here I see clumps of cells or clusters of cells. As we said earlier, these cells are epithelial rest of malacia, remnant of a hertwig root sheet. These are the rests of malacia, a remnant of epithelial root sheet. Cementoblasts, they are far away from each other. This is the acellular cementum. These are the, the rests of malacea, epithelial rest of malacea, clumps or clusters of cells. All these clumps are communicated with each other, but depending on the section, it may be it run in one part of these rests, so we see them as clumps or clusters. At this image on the top right, you can see these are the rest of epithelial rest of malacea. They are communicated with each other. Now we'll talk about the alveolar bone. This is a sagittal section in the mandible. You can identify this is the tooth and this is the alveolar bone. What is the alveolar bone? It's the part of maxilla and mandible which holds the sockets of the teeth. This is place where the tooth is inserted, we call it the socket. Here are the teeth, the site where the tooth is inserted, we call it the alveolar socket. The alveolar bone is composed of two parts, alveolar bone proper and supporting bone. The alveolar bone proper is composed of outer, is the outer cortical plates and the lining of the socket. And the supporting bone is the central bone, which is the type of cancellous bone or spongy bone or trabecular bone. So the alveolar bone is divided into two parts, alveolar bone proper, alveolar bone proper, and supporting bone. The alveolar bone proper has two parts, the, the uh, outer cortical plates, which uh, protects the mandible, and the thin plate, which lines the socket of the tooth. And this alveolar bone proper is a compact bone, dense Haversian bone, while the supporting bone is a trapecular bone or spongy bone, cancellous bone, where we can find the bone marrow spaces, blood forming tissue. Types of bone, types of bone or classification of bone depends on the development, the histology, and the shape. Uh, in our session, we have to add, uh, we will talk about only in the histological appearance, whether it is a cortical bone or compact bone or a cancellous bone or spongy bone. In this image, we can identify the cortical plate. Now we have uh, C, the central bone, cancellous bone, and here is the bone lining the socket bone lining the alveolus or dentoalveolus. Dentoalveolus is the socket of the teeth. In this image, 
you can see the tooth. This is a decalcified section. The enamel, you can identify here the enamel, the enamel space because it is lost during preparation. I can identify the gingiva. I identify the periodontal ligament, which we said earlier is the dense fibrous connective tissue occupying the space between the roots of the teeth and the alveolar bone. And it is communicated with the gingiva and also it is communicated with the pulp of the tooth. Then I have the alveolar bone. This lining of the socket, we said earlier that we uh, call it cripriform plate. Why? Because I have multiple Volkmann canals communicating with the bone. That's why it is called cripriform plates. It is perforated by multiple Volkmann canals. A steve like appearance. Also, this lining of the socket, we call it uh, bundle bone. Why? Because the uh, collagen fibers enters the bone as uh, bundles. And in the center, I have the cancellous bone or the spongy bone or trapecular bone, which holds the bone marrow spaces. Look at this image. You can see here uh, the arrows shows the multiple Volkmann canals uh, lining the socket. These, this is why we call it cripriform. It's perforated like a cripriform. That's why we call it cripriform plate. At the same time, also this area we call the bundle bone. In this image, it is a ground section to see the compact bone. It is composed of a central Haversian canal and the bone is arranged as circles around this uh, central canal, Haversian canal. Here I can see the osteocytes, lacunis, arranged in a pattern around this central Haversian canal. Uh, this we call it the Haversian system. And these canals have horizontal canals communicating one with the other are the Volkmann canals. This is another ground section. We can identify the Haversian canal and the bone lamellas around it. Osteocytes lacunis. This we call it the osteon. Osteon, Haversian canal and the bone around it. Uh, these canals that runs communicate them together this is a Volkmann canal this is a Volkmann canal here I have the osteon the Haversian canal in the center and the lacunis of the osteocyte like lamellas around this canal lamellar bone here I have the Haversian canal here I can identify the osteocyte lacunis and look here I have canaliculi radiating in all direction and also they have a pattern of distribution around this canal in compared to the cementocyte lacunis. The spongy bone or cancellous bone or trabecular bone composed of bone trabeculis and in between, I have a soft tissue, which is the bone marrow, blood forming tissue. Here, number one refers to the blood forming tissue, the bone marrow. And number two, I have the bone trabeculis. By aging, we'll see more fat tissue in these areas, increase in the adipose tissue, filling these spaces, replaced the bone marrow tissue, replaced by fat tissue, by aging. This is a scanning electron microscope for the surface of the bone. We can identify the position of the osteoplast and osteoclast on the surface, osteoplast, and the sites of the insertion of the periodontal ligament. This is the alveolar bone, the sites of the collagen fibers entering the bone. And once they enter the bone, they become Sharpe's fibers. Here I have a bone surface scanning electron microscope on the left. The two images on the right, I can see here the osteoclast lacuni, Hauship's lacuni, large multinucleated cell responsible for the resorption of the bone. Responsible for the resorption of the bone. Uh, 
uh, the cells that undergo the resorption, they have a tract, special tract on the surface of the pond, or they leave a tract like the snail walking on the sand. Uh, this tract we call it tail tract appearance. The, so the process of resorption of the osteoclast on the surface of the bone, uh, it have a special pattern. We call it snail tract appearance. So B here, the site of the osteoclast on the surface of the bone. When, uh, as it undergoes resorption, this track we call it nail tract appearance. This is scanning electron microscope for the bone, but it is in resting case. Resting, not active. You can see the sides of the Sharpe's fibers. They are mineralized. They are mineralized. So this is scanning through microscope for a resting bone. If the uh, area like this one, if these sites are open or clear, so this is an active, it will be an active bone. So this one, this area shows a resting bone. The arrow here refers to which part of the bone? Yes, the socket of the bone. You can identify it clearly. It is like a white band around the tooth. This area is the area of the cripriform plate or the bundle bone. In X-ray, they refer it to they refer to it as lamina dura. We call it lamina dura. So the lining of the socket has different names: cripriform plate, bundle bone, or, or alveolar bone proper. In X-ray, they refer to it as lamina dura. It is a sign of healthiness of the tooth. When you take an X-ray. You look at this lamidura. If it is present, which means that this tooth is healthy. If this area, lamidura, is not present, meaning that there is a problem. So when you take X-ray, follow the, the direction of the lamidura or the position of the lamidura. If it is present and it is clear, meaning that this tooth is healthy. If it is not clear, or it is missing in the apical area, meaning that there is a problem in this tooth, periodontal problem or uh, problem in the pulp of this tooth. Look at this image, the black arrows referring to what? To the lamina dura, or cripriform plate, or the bundle bone, or the alveolar bone proper, they all have the same meaning, the bone lining the socket. In this image, what structures you can identify? The dentine, the Tom's granular layer, the acellular cementum, the incremental lines in the cementum. I can identify the periodontal ligament fibers. I can identify the alveolar bone. This is a longitudinal section. So these canals which are circular are the Volkman canals and the canals which are rectangular share are the Persian canals. Here I can identify the osteon, you can see the canals, and around it I have the bone arranged. I have incremental lines in bone, we call them reversal lines. These are the, these are the reversal lines in the bone. Here I, can see, here I can see the reversal lines of the bone. Bone activity and bone resting, leading to incremental lines we call them reversal lines. I hope you enjoyed my session. See you next week. Good luck.